It's now time for member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox, and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to share the experiences of two constituents of mine, Heather and Maynard Payne, both experienced nurses who have endured nothing but frustration and delays with the College of Nurses of Ontario. Our local hospital has an immediate requirement for a nurse with Mr. Payne's exper expertise. However, he has not been able to clear the obstacles at the CNO. Mr. Payne is an American-born permanent resident of Canada with 20 years operating room experience in the United States. Mrs. Payne was born in Canada and educated as a nurse here. They have experienced significant and unjustified delays with credentials approvals and registration through the CNO. Shockingly, one of the many significant delays was a requirement for both Heather and Maynard to prove they speak English. To further frustrate the matter, when I spoke to the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration about this issue and the proposed amendments to the Health Professionals Act, he told me it was not his department, but a matter for the Minister of Health. Surprise, surprise, when I asked the Minister of Health, and he told me to speak to the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. How do we expect to deliver the health care our constituents deserve if the people with the skills, the training and drive to do so have to jump through unnecessary regulatory hoops and barriers? Barriers like proving their proficiency in English when their first and only language is indeed English. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Members' statements. The member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Before long, we'll be singing Solidarity Forever over in those benches. Uh, but anyways, I uh, want to rise today, Mr. Speaker, uh, something that's directed to the Minister of, uh, Minister of Housing. Uh, imagine the surprise of tenants who are seniors living in Timmins and where it's called the Empire Complex at 11 Spruce Street uh, when they organize themselves as tenants into a tenant association to do two things. Yes, to advocate on behalf of tenants when it comes to issues in their building, but just to get together. There's 60% of the people that live in that building that are tenants uh, that are, that are uh, seniors, and they want to be able to organize themselves so that they can have a tea every now and then, uh, enjoy each other's company, uh, have a little bit of opportunity to socialize with other people that live in the building. Well, imagine the surprise, Mr. Speaker, when the organizers of the Tenants Association gets notice of eviction from the owner, a Mr. David Wall, who comes from British Columbia, who serves notice of eviction to seniors for trying to organize essentially a tenant association that both is able to deal with them being able to socialize but to advocate for their rights. I'm putting the government on notice because when Natrice, one of the people that was evicted, called the Ministry of Labor or the Ministry of Housing. They said, Oh, he's within his rights. When is it in your right to kick a senior out of a building because they're trying to organize a tenants association? So I serve notice to the House and to the Minister today. This is something we're going to have to resolve, and we're going to have to resolve it very quickly. Thank you. Statements by members. The member from Etobicoke Centre. Mr. Speaker. Speaker, recently I joined constituents in my community of Etobicoke Centre in attending the fourth annual Islington Health and Wellness Fair sponsored by the Village of Islington BIA, the Islington Golf Club, and the Etobicoke Chapter of CARP. And I want to thank the organizers and sponsors for continuing this annual tradition of reaching out and supporting my constituents in Etobicoke Centre. At the fair, residents of Etobicoke had the opportunity to meet local health professionals in the community and receive expert advice on how to stay healthy and active through all ages. Of their life, Mr. Speaker, and it included organizations like the PKD Foundation, the Canadian Diabetes Association, Alzheimer's Toronto, the Mississauga Halton CCAC, Red Cross, Meals on Wheels, Islington Senior Centre, uh, Dorothy Lee Hospice, the Etobicoke, uh, uh, the Etobicoke Lawn Bowling Club, and others. And I haven't mentioned them all; there are too many to mention. But so many exhibitors offering important advice to my constituents. In a community like mine, where we have one of the highest percentage of seniors of any riding in the country, uh, this kind of advice, this kind of support on how people can stay active and healthy is so important. And the support of CARP Etobicoke in particular, both in sponsoring events like this one and in the regular work that the local chapter carries out, makes a huge difference to our seniors and their families and families who care for seniors, Mr. Speaker. The Etobicoke chapter is led by Chair Gary Hepworth. It's incredibly active and takes part in local events and hosting regular meetings where members discuss important issues that Canadians face as we age. This advocacy continues to make a tangible difference in the lives of my constituents and truly reflects CARP's commitment to solidarity between generations in order to build a more inclusive, healthier and civil society. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank all the sponsors and participants of the event and applaud CARP Etobicoke's contributions to this cause and its advocacy on behalf of seniors in my community of Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you.
Member Statements. The member from Wellington, Holton Hills. Mr. Speaker, my remarks this afternoon are addressed to the Minister of Health. I was approached a few months ago by a constituent, Barbara Selkirk, whose mother, Mar Marlene Shields, has been diagnosed with a stage 4 glioblastoma brain tumor. After two operations, removing as much of the tumor as medically possible, Marlene had both radiation and chemotherapy. These treatments did little to slow the growth of the tumor. However, for a year, she received biweekly infusion treatments with Avastin. This treatment seemed to work, and MRI results showed that her tumor had stabilized. The cost of Avastin is up to $12,000 a month. The cost of the treatment has been covered by Marlene's husband's company's health plan, but that comes to an end at the end of this month. We know that the cost of Avastin is covered in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. If Marlene lived in any of these provinces, she would be assured her treatment could continue. But because she lives in Ontario, and the Ministry of Health says the manufacturer has not proven that Avastin works, the government will not fund it. I know that the member for dufferin caledon has written the minister on behalf of Marlene as well. Time is running out. We implore the minister to personally review this matter and intervene on a compassionate basis until the manufacturer can submit additional clinical evidence that Avastin works as a treatment for this kind of cancer. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member statements. The member from London, Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to share with members of the Legislature details of the ninth annual Unbound Fashion Show put on by the Fashion Design Program at Fanshawe College. Unbound, well known for its cocktail hour, catered reception, celebrity MC, fashion designer, and its New York New York inspired runway features the final collections of graduating seniors in the fashion design program. Held at Museum London, this is a high profile event, is juried by renowned Canadian fashion icons David Dixon and Franco Marabelli, amongst other fashion industry leaders. Through the fashion design program, students acquire a three year cooperative Ontario College Advanced Diploma, which prepares them for the ever versatile and rapidly changing fashion industry. With this in mind, Unbound gives students the opportunity to let their talent shine and a professional venue to display their hard work. In fact, the top prize winner receives a professional portfolio, a photo shoot, and a 5,000 valued subscription, subscription to Worth Global Style Network. Speaker, I would like to congratulate the graduating class of 2015. I am very proud of the creativity, passion shown in London, Fanshawe, and I'm also pleased to share this achievement with all of you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamos, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize and thank school crossing guards in my riding of Trinity Spadina, the City of Toronto, and all of Ontario. Recently, the City of Toronto proclaimed April 15, 2015 as School Crossing Guard Appreciation Day, and I believe it is very important to thank the school crossing guards in my riding for their dedication and commitment to the community safety. Thank you to the school crossing guards in Trinity Spadina. I know you don't make a lot, but you take your job very seriously. As a parent, I want to thank you for the important work you do each and every day. School crossing guards appreciation day provide us with an opportunity to recognize the significant contribution and the important role school crossing guards play in the safety of our children. Their work uh, ensures the safe, safe arrival of our children both in schools in the morning and at home um, again at night they play a vital role in our educational system in Ontario. I'm extremely proud of all school crossing guards in Trinity Spadina, as the work they do day in and day out ensures the safety of our children. I stand today inviting all Ontarians to take a second and thank one of your local school crossing guards. Right here. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to celebrate National Organ and Tissue Donor Donation Awareness Week. Anybody who has received an organ donation or knows somebody who has can't express enough how important this initiative is. In the past, I've been very fortunate to meet with Sandra Holdsworth of Gravenhurst. Sandra was a recipient of a liver transplant in 1997, and the year since has been a volunteer and tremendous advocate for the Be a Donor initiative. Sandra has also been a competitor at the Canadian, American and World Transplant Games and continues to be a great ambassador for the importance of organ donation. And in fact, in 2011, Sandra organized a friendly competition amongst MPPs to see who might sign up the most donors. 
I'm proud to say that the community of Perry Sound, in my riding, is currently the fifth highest ranked community in Ontario, with 51% of local residents being registered to be a donor. It's also worth note noting that the top five communities in the ranking are all located in Northern Ontario. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the dedicated volunteers in Ontario, and particularly the Trillium Gift of Life Network. This week, I would ask people to take time to go online to www.beadonor.ca to verify their organ donor card and sign up to give the gift of life. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your statements, the member for Kingston and the Isles. Mr. Speaker, I rise to tell you about a town hall I recently hosted in Kingston and the Islands to raise awareness on mental health. Mental illness is so common, so varied, and the impact is so huge on society that we focused on stigma and strategies for its reduction. The occasion was anchored by six panelists with a wealth of practical and research experience. Ruth Wilson spoke about health as a holistic package and sickness resulting from a deficit in any one area. Family doctors already have a grasp on a, on a person's dynamic. Ruman Mylev discussed self-stigma and when one believes the information and resists seeking help. Talking to those effective, affected is the key to re-education. Michael Condra presented mental health as a continuum of minor to major disruptions, and he pointed out the vulnerability of youth to risk factors such as bullying. Yes. Heidi Penning and Ben Gooch's message was a call to action to employ persons with disabilities in inclusive environments where employees can feel safe, engaged, and productive. Craig McFarland spoke of Kingston Police's understanding of the importance of following up after a crisis to connect individuals with appropriate community resources. Lastly, Madison Dorling bravely shared her lived experience with bipolar disorder. It is my hope that the discussion brought us a little closer to accepting people with mental health conditions by recognizing negative stereotypes, stigma, and discrimination. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Glengarry, Prescott, Russell. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today as a member of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario and on behalf of my constituents of Glengarry, Prescott, Russell, to congratulate and to recognize Taylor Young, a constituent in my riding who was awarded an Ontario Medal for Young Volunteers this past Monday. Established in 1998, the Ontario Medal for Young Volunteers honours youth between the ages of 15 and 24 who have given a large amount of their time to charitable or not-for-profit organizations or initiatives and who have inspired others, uh, other young people to volunteer. The medals were presented by the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. Taylor Young of Dalkey is a gifted piper and fiddler. For almost five years, he's been a member of the Glengarry Pipe Band, a community-based, non-for-profit uh, ensemble, volunteering his musical talents at many local community events. He has made significant contributions to the Celtic community in Glengarry County, actively encouraging other young people to embrace and promote local Celtic traditions and culture. I'm extremely proud of Taylor for being awarded this important distinction in recognition of his significant contribution and dedication to volunteer service. He is truly an exceptional young Ontarian. Again, congratulations, Taylor. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I'd like to thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports by committees.